to today's Los Blancos podcast. Today begins a new series. Today we'll be discussing um, a new series called uh, Forgotten Seasons. Now, this is going to be a, a rounded thing mostly, as as it's part of the Los Blancos podcast. Um, but you know, today we will be starting off with a, a relatively um, a new newer season, and we'll be slowly working our way back, uh, back in time, and you know, talking about those seasons which perhaps maybe Real Madrid fans don't appreciate as much because, you know, they're surrounded by even greater ones, even more notorious ones, and so ones that perhaps get a bit lost in history. Um, today we'll be starting off with the 1920 season, um, the one in which Zizou returned and um, he got us the, the, the league title. We managed to beat Barcelona. It was in the pandemic, so it was such a, a weird season and it was definitely unique in that matter and so... Yeah, it was a very, very, very um, intriguing one. So let's begin, shall we? And, um, you know, there's no other way to understand the season other than, you know, talk about the context that had led to that season. And, you know, there, there's there's plenty of uh, context for this because in the in the 17-18 season, the end, at the end of that season, um, Ronald obviously won the Champions League, beat Liverpool to the, in the final uh, in Kiev. And um, as a result, after all of that, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo left uh, and Zinedine Zidane left the following season. Well, the 2018-2019 season. There's no other way to say, but it was a total shit show. You know, you turned up every week and you thought there's a good chance that Real Madrid could lose here. And it wasn't like, you know, any team could rock up to the Bernabeu and, and win that season. Uh, we had plenty of embarrassing losses, you know, none less than the Barcelona 5-1 defeat, um, the game against Ajax. And so, you know, it was a really, really horrible season. Um, and, uh, you know, we had to get our, our feet back on, or, or we had to get back on our feet after that season because, um, you know, the managerial circus that had happened that season as well, you know, with Lopetegui starting the season, uh, sacked, then it was Solari, um, and then we got brought back to Zizou at the, right at the end of that season. And so, um, you know, we had to fix that somewhat. So going into this 1920 season, you know what the expectation was. It was to stabilise the club um, and try and get us back on, on our feet. And so, um, you know, Florentino Perez made the signings to address every single one of those problems. Um, I think very, very, very notably that the, uh, in the transfer window, we obviously signed Eden Hazard. I think um, 120 million euros spent. Um, now looking back at it, obviously you could have spent that in a better way, but you know at the time everyone was excited. Hazard had just come off probably his best season at Chelsea uh, in eighteen nineteen. He was really terrific that year, um, and then um, yeah, we made other signings as well, other big signings. Um, you look at Jovic, sixty million. <laughs> it says quite a lot about those two guys, the most expensive, but they were the two worst of the of the window. Um, yeah, Luka Jovic was not great that year and um, for the rest of his round career, in fact. Um, and he was uh, he was pretty poor, 60 million euros down the drain, pretty much. And um, then at centre back, we did sign um, Edel Militao, but you wouldn't really make that big of much of a contribution in the 1920 season. Um, it would be in the lattice in the next few seasons that he would start to come alive. Um, but these two were probably the most important ones, which were Ferlon Mendy for 45 million and then um, Rodrigo Goes for 45 million as well. Two relative unknowns um, for Real Madrid fans at least. Um, Ferlon Mendy had been pretty notorious at that point in, the, in, the, in, the, in his career. He is 24 and he came off a very, very good season with Lyon. So it was a good signing at the time and one in which, you know, had plenty of promise. And then Rodrigo made the season before, but he was returning. He was coming to Europe at age 18. So, you know, just to fit those rules. And then the final signing of the window was uh, an Alphonse Areola on loan. How significant that would be? Well, I guess we'll find out in a second. Um, then uh, elsewhere, um, we we lost a few players as well in, the, in that season. Uh, Mateo Kovacic went to Chelsea for 45 million. Uh, Marcos Llorente, 30 million. Although he wouldn't make a contribution in the 1920 season, he caused a few problems in the in the seasons to come. Uh, Teo Hernandez, 22 million, lost to AZ Milan. Uh, Raul de Tomas, 20 million to Benfica, 15 million. Now this is the biggest one. Um, Kelo Navas goes to um, goes to goes to PSG for 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 fifteen million. 
a huge, huge signing for PSG. One in which, you know, shocked a lot of Real Madrid fans because of what happened the previous season. Um, Florentino Perez essentially tried to replace Keylor Navas the season before, but it just totally didn't work. Courtois was pathetic in that first season. He was really, really bad. And um, at that point, we were just wondering, well, was it really the right decision to go and get rid of Keylor Navas? Um, I guess it was at this point it was fight or fly, uh, fight or fly for 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 Thibaut Courtois. So you know you, you he just had to had to work it out. And um, we also lost two other players on loan. Uh, Martin Odegaard who loaned out to Real Sociedad, and then uh, Danny Ceballos uh, loaned out to to Arsenal as well. So um, a pretty significant window, one in which we had made the biggest um, moves that we had in. Well, people were saying since 2009, so a big, big transfer window, one in which, you know, Real Madrid had to get back on their feet is what I keep saying. But it was it was so important to make sure that Real Madrid tried to do this. Um, but in the midst of all this, preseason was going on and um, preseason did not look much better either. We were pathetic in preseason and it was all compounded with a, with a really big bad news for, for Real Madrid when uh, Marco Asensio tore his ACL versus Arsenal. Um, the previous season he had been good at points but really inconsistent and so you know losing Asensio was pretty big because that meant we were down to really really you know, we, we didn't really have too many attackers at that point um, we had Benzema, Hazard, Vinicius, Rodrigo um, and bearing in mind what Vinicius and Rodrigo were at this time um, they were not the guys who we look at right now and say these are fantastic um, so you know the, this is this is a, a bad situation. Uh, many people would consider for Real Madrid. Um, alongside this, um, seven three loss against Atleti. You know, you know an Atleti side who had recently just signed Joao Felix, and it looked very very good for for Felix in this in that game. That was a really bad game. I remember it. I was I was totally stunned <laughs> seeing that result. And, um, you know, it was not a good omen whatsoever, but, you know, whatever happened. Um, and then beginning the season, it just wasn't a great start either. Two wins for the first five, four games. That's not really a good tell for you. You know, you don't want to start that slowly. It looked like, well, as, as Zizou did come back, but, you know, at the end of the day, how much difference can you make truly? You know, these, these guys didn't really look that comfortable. And... The far the previous season, you'd looked at the guys who had really contributed, Vinicius and 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 uh, Sergio Regulon. Regulon been so uh, had been loaned out at that point, and so he would not be coming back to, to Real Madrid for this season. And so, um, you know, it, it was it was a concerning point for us. We didn't know what to do, um, and um, one in which you know Barcelona. You looked at the coming into the season, Barcelona looked really really strong. Um, the previous year, Barcelona made the semi-finals of the Champions League and they should have gone through, but Liverpool managed to mount that remontada and come back and, and um, totally overturn that tie. Um, so, you know, they, they completely dog-walked the league the previous, previous year and so it looked really, really bad for us. Um, Ernesto Valverde continued as coach of Barcelona and it was, it was, it was a, a not great position for Real Madrid to be in at the start of the season. Um, this has all been compounded. This poor form with a with a three 0 loss and to PSG, one in which you know I I particularly recall um, Angel Di Maria had a fantastic game in that one, and um, just PSG looked so much better than us. And um, you know this is a PSG side that you know were trying to get to the Champions League final, and they turned out they did in that season. Um, but yeah, it was it was certainly one in which it was it was very telling. Um, in that game where Rodri were, we just couldn't get going and we just got completely smacked about by a team who were clearly better than us in that game. And so something clearly had to change, a couple more dodgy results, you know, ones in which weren't really convincing later. And then we played Club Rouge. Now this is probably the, the game of the season for Real Madrid because um, not in a positive way, I'm talking about the, the game that really told the season and changed the season for us. Um, it was a 2-2 draw to, to Club Bruges. Now, many people wouldn't have looked at this game and said it's that much, but if many, any of you recall, it was the game which um, Courtois got subbed off at half-time. And I don't know what happened with Courtois, but in that moment where he got subbed off for Alphonse Arriola, and Arriola put in a good, good enough performance um, for the next few games in which um, Courtois dropped, 
something just, some sort of switch just flicked in Courtois' head and it just turned him into a, a crazy man for the rest of the season and to, for the rest of his rounded career so far um, to date. So, you know, it, it was perhaps a, a bad one. You know, I, I recall Emmanuel Denis um, doing the doing the Ronaldo celebration at the Bernabeu. It was not a good time for us, but we did manage to mount a run and get 2-2. Two, two. So, you know, in a Champions League campaign, to, for Real Madrid to start with a loss and a, and a draw, um, it's not really great. Um, but, you know, a couple more games later, we still hadn't really got off in La Liga, but, you know, we were getting by, we were getting wins, small enough wins. They weren't fantastic wins, but they were okay wins. Um, and then the game in the Champions League, third game, um, or fourth game, sorry, uh, we played Galatasaray, and this was the game in which um, Rodrigo completely descended, and I, I was completely sold on Rodrigo from this moment on. Um, it was the game where Rodrigo scored a hat-trick, the perfect hat-trick, by the way, um, in, and he was just fantastic in this game, and, you know, it, it just felt like things were coming together at this point. 6-0 win against Galatasaray, it may not look like much, and it probably wasn't, but, you know, things were starting to click. Um, at this point as well, Fede Valverde had started to become a more impactful player in the team. You know, he definitely had been, you know, in the 18-19 season, he had started to look at him and say, is this guy good enough for us? And, and you know, in the 19-20 season, it began to see that this guy really complemented Kroos and Modric really, really well. Because in the 18-19 season, you're looking at Kroos and Modric and saying, how much longer have they got left? Well, it turns out they got a couple of years left, don't they? Um, and Casemiro looked really, really energised with uh, Fede Valverde in that midfield with them. And it was just an, a really big um, addition to the team to have Fede there. Um, and, you know, he, his, his physical presence, which is what he was at this point, which was just a runner in that midfield to compensate. He was really impactful as a result, helping those legs for Kroos and Modric because you could just tell that they had lost a step physically and so they needed this guy to come in and just do all the running for them um now the the big one is that there was a 2-2 game against psg now at this at this first half was truly terrific it was the best football i've seen from real madrid since um since ronaldo left and it was really really good hazard looked fantastic fede looked fantastic Kroos, modric looked fantastic Everyone in this team looked fantastic. And then it just went. Hazard got the injury and the Real Madrid lost the game. And they, did, they lost the game. They lost the control of the game, uh, I should say. And it was a 2-2 result in the end. Um, I remember Gareth Bale hit the post uh, last second, the free kick. And I I was so, so pissed at that moment in time. It was just like, I thought we'd we'd come back and, and got our revenge on PSG. Boom, they come back 2-2 and... Um, Leave, we leave the group second place. So it was not a great, great point for us. Um, but we get into December, first El Clasico of the season. 0-0 um, versus Barcelona, pretty dull game. <laughs> Completely dull, nothing happened. And um, yeah, El Clasico, ever since then, to be fair, El Clasico has not had a, had a draw, I don't think. Which is kind of crazy, you know. Um, in my in 90 minutes, I believe they have. But, you know, the game has not ended on a draw since then, which is definitely very, very crazy. Um, but it was the last ever El Clasico on El Ernesto Valverde's watch. We will talk about that in a second. Um, and, um, yeah, they, they, they head into the, the winter break because this was in December. They head into the winter break, um, match day 19, level on 40 points with Barcelona. As much as I wanted to criticise Real Madrid at this point, they were still getting the results and they still managed to keep it level with Barcelona. So things were looking pretty good when the season resumed on the 4th of January uh, of uh, 2020. Um, and the Supercopa had come. Um, time for the Supercopa games. 3-1 versus Valencia. Um, one in which you can remember Tony Cross scored from the, from the corner, which is a fantastic one from us. Um, but the most notable thing was in the final because we played Atleti in the final and um, yeah it was a definitely very very notorious game not one for the for the entertainment but in the in the extra time last few minutes Morata is through on goal one on one with the keeper Fede comes back and absolutely snaps him takes the red card 
Um, we go into the penalties and we win on penalties uh, against Atletico Madrid. Uh, Courtois, the hero, with the with the fantastic penalty save. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just a fantastic penalty when uh, Sergio Ramos scores the final penalty um, for Real Madrid and uh, wins us the shootout. So it's a huge, huge, huge result at that point where you're thinking, okay, things look good. We scooped the first trophy of the season. This is really, really important because you know at the end of the day, you know, Super Cup on. It doesn't mean much as a, as a solitary trophy, but it's important to get off the books and trying to get that first win of the season, first trophy lift of the season. So it was a huge, huge win for us. The day after, we beat Atletico Madrid um, and Fede Valverde establishes himself as a Real Madrid, um, as a Real Madrid solid rotation player. Um, guess what happens to another Valverde? Ernesto Valverde has been sacked as coach of Barcelona a day after Real Madrid win the Champions, win the Supercopa. This has been really surprising for me because we, as I said, we were level on points with Barcelona, forty points, and so I was really confused when they sacked Valverde because I was just like, "What's the point? You're not going to get a guy who's better than him." The reasons being were for the the style of play. They they said that Messi was they were using Messi too much and he was relying on Messi too much, which. You know, arguments, arguments can be made for that, but at the end of the day, if you have Messi, you're going to use him. Use him to the best of his ability, don't you? Um, but, you know, they did go ahead and um, get a promising La Liga manager, someone who had been really, really good um, for, for for Betis in the previous years, which is Kike Setien. Um, and people have been really, really high on him for his style of play, and so it looked like a good fit in terms of style, but... Managing Barcelona is a lot more than just style, and I, I, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I find it really funny that they thought this would work, um, because I've been surprised that Ernesto Valverde it worked pretty damn well for them, which you know, um, you know, it was pretty good from him. But the fact is, Kike Setien was just never meant to be a Barcelona manager, and they really felt it in the in the in the second half of the season when they just didn't have Valverde and they had Setien. Um, and yeah, Roundry took advantage of this. Um, they played the Copa del Rey, and they played Unionistas, and they played Zaragoza. Uh, two relative easy games, I say that, but you know they, they didn't make easy work of that of Zaragoza. They made, it was four three in the end, and so it was a difficult one that. But whatever. Um, now we move on because we move on to the Copa del Rey. Now we felt like Copa del Rey. This was potentially our year. You can make it work. Um, nope. We play Real Sociedad in the Copa del Rey. Um, and um, if you remember, we did. I did say that Martin Odegaard was um, loaned out to, to Real Sociedad. He had a fantastic game. And this was the point where I thought, okay, you know what? This guy is more than capable um, of playing for Real Madrid. This guy is more than ready to play for Real Madrid. Turns out he didn't really play for Real Madrid by half a season. They moved to Arsenal, but he was more than ready. I think this was the game where you just realised things were just. It was you know you could get away from all that you 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 wanted to, but Real Madrid was still that that shocking little team um, at the at heart, and so they had to find a way to sort of solidify the back, um, and that's what Zizou did for the rest of the season. He made sure that Real Madrid were not. Uh, we're not you. We're not. We're not easy to get past. This did did involve the end of Marcelo, and this was probably the last time Marcelo would ever play for Real Madrid. And as a starter, and this season was the last time Marcelo was used properly. You you could kind of feel in the previous season with Regulon playing so so well, and um, and you could feel it this season because Ferlon Mendy was just so much better than him. Uh, and you know at this point you just felt like Marcelo it was done for him. So. And we move on because the Champions League returns, and um, we felt uh, we felt really bad because it was a two one loss against Manchester City, one in which I felt we got a bit robbed in that game because I didn't feel like I felt like um, the the penalty call was harsh on Carvajal. I thought you you, you know Sterling was already on his way down, um, and then the red card on Ramos. I, that, there was no way that was a red card. It's, it's as simple as that. <laughs> It's as simple as that. I just don't think it's a red card whatsoever. And so we, it was the same season, same thing as the previous year. Ramos being suspended um, in the round of 16. And um, yeah, we'll soon to find out what happens. But 
Um, yeah, a disappointing, disappointing loss against Man City, but we've got a chance to win against Barcelona in the previous next game. Um, and um, it was a very, very good game. I enjoyed this game quite a lot, and it was compounded by Vinicius Junior. Now, this was the first time I felt Vinicius could like generally amount to quite a lot. You just felt like he he came off and he 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 played this game really, really well. He did fantastically. And, um, you know, Tony Cruz, obviously, with that fa fantastic pass and telling him to run and then um, deflecting off of Pique. <laughs> um, it was fantastic from Vinicius to get us the win. And then, obviously, Mariana's cameo, one minute, one goal, fantastic from Mariana Diaz. Um, probably the only thing he's done for Real Madrid, but, you know, that's not a bad way to, to, to give your Real Madrid legacy. Um, and it was a huge, huge win against Barcelona, one in which that gave us a lead against Barcelona and something that could help us in the future. Um, then, um, the pr next game, we then face Betis and we lose 2-1 versus Betis. But this was probably known for more things than that. It was the, it was the start of the pandemic. This is the last ever game for Real Madrid um, at the Bernabeu for a couple of years. And um, it was a bad game against Betis, but Match Day 27 concludes. Pandemic's called, lockdown's called, and uh, Real Madrid won't be playing for a couple months. And that's it. And so you just feel like, how are they going to return? How are they going to return? They're going to play with their phys physical peaks. Are they going to be better than Barcelona? Maybe Barcelona needed the rest. Maybe they needed this, this, that, and the other. Um, and so you, you wondered what, what was going to happen when, when Real Madrid returned. Well, in June, they returned. 3-1 winning against Eibar, and it was fantastic, great win, uh, great way to start your, your your return to La Liga, and, um, you know, something that could possibly be a sign of, of what's to come. you got 10 more games, um, including this Eibar game, um, you had 10 more games left. You need to get clean sheets on the board, because that was the story of the final bits of this season. It was clean sheets, lock up at the back, and no no messing around. This the story at the end of this season. The fact was that we got seven clean sheets uh, out of eight when we needed it. And in the eighth game, we practically wrapped up the La Liga title. And that was the clutch moment for, for Real Madrid. We got six clean sheets in eight games that, that really told us the title, that really won us the title. And so that was fantastic for Real Madrid um, to go ahead and get that clean sheets. And I think the back three... The, the, the triangle of Ramos, Baran and um, and Courtois were terrific at this. They did so well at this. They stopped opposition attacks from even getting a goal. That was how good they were at this, uh, this final bit of the season. And Ramos, uh, you know, in particular, it was fantastic on both ends of the, of the field because he got, he got 13 goals in all competitions that season too. He got 11 goals in La Liga. Finished as our second top scorer, and you know you, people were talking about how Ramos could help us in this end of the season. He scored the penalties for us. He was the penalty taker, and he scored headers. And I remember a free kick he scored against Mallorca. It was just fantastic for from Ramos to to go ahead and take over this 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 Real Madrid season when they needed the leadership, when they needed someone to to go ahead and dominate for that. It was Sergio Ramos, and this was probably the last time Ramos really contributed for Real Madrid because the next season was injury played from him and, and then obviously he leaves on a free to PSG. Um, so, you know, for this basically to be his last season as a Real Madrid player, um, to make that final sig significant contribution, um, it was huge from him and he completely, if there was anyone, it was him and Karim Benzema and Rafa Ran and, and uh, Thibaut Courtois that really deserved this, this title. Um, speaking of Karim Benzema, he was fantastic this season and you know, people obviously love to say Benzema was a one season wonder. I say it's not true because even after, as soon as Ronaldo left, he took the goal scoring load. And I think this season was perfect evidence of that. 27 goals, 11 assists. And bearing in mind who was next to him because there were guys like Eden Hazard who barely played. There was guys like Vinicius Jr. who at this point was not goal scoring phenomenon. Rodrigo at this point was really inconsistent. Asensio who was injured for the whole season. Um, and then Isco, Bale, uh, who really can trust at this point. Um, James, who, who was there at the end of the season. 
and who you really couldn't trust either. So Benzema did all of this despite a pretty much dodgy team, a dodgy attack around him. And so Benzema, I think that's, that's, it was just a terrific end of the season for, from Karim Benzema, one in which he led us to the title as well. And he, he thoroughly deserved this. Um, and I think this was a, a sign of things to come for, from Karim Benzema. So really fantastic. And obviously, I love to talk about the story of the season, which was the 25 goal conceded in La Liga. You know, that's that's that was 13 better than second place Barcelona. Um, and it led to us being five points ahead of Barcelona at the end of the season. Um, if you recall, Barcelona, <laughs> Barcelona's season ended in total meltdown um, with the A2 loss to Bayern Munich. Eee, that was pretty funny. For, for, and then the fax machine from Messi, stuff like that. Um, all of that stuff, it was... It was brilliant end to the season for us um but obviously it did not you know champions league was still there but guess what we had to the etihad and um two one loss in manchester city and it was the rafa varan game and this is why i want to give the credit to rafa varan because everyone's going to remember the season for rafa varan as the one in which he played in the pink kit and gave city two goals but you know i think rafa varan had, had his best around the season in this year and it was just clouded by a, a, by a poor performance in the Champions League. So um, I just wanted to give Rafa Varane his flowers when, 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 when he deserved it. Um, but all in all, you know, it was a hugely successful season. Even if we had been knocked down in round of 16 um, by Manchester City. One in which we definitely got our platform for the following seasons. One in which we realised who was our, the, you know, the main parts of our team for the seasons to come. One in which we realised that, you know, the guys who are leading us in seasons prior probably didn't have too long left. And so we built the foundation with Vinny, with Rodrigo, with Fede, those three in particular, um, were ready, were, were hardened and ready for the coming seasons. Um, Furlong Mendy as well, um, one in which we got called to our finally to click as a Real player. Um, one in which we wrestled back control of La Liga from Barcelona and Barcelona have struggled since, um, struggled to be a stable club since, um, and one in which that built, built the basis for what we have right now as a Real Madrid fan, who I'm going to be talking, you know, about more seasons to come, um, you know, who's, you know, we look at this side right now with Mbappe, with Vinny, with Rodrigo, with Bellingham, with Valverde, with Camavinga, with Schuermeni, it was all based upon this season, built by Zizou, who a lot of people love to criticise his tactics, say he was give it give the ball to Ronaldo and to make it make make stuff happen. I I love to say this this is more than just that. He completely solidified this defence, made it the best defence in La Liga, better than Atletico Madrid. And he he fired us to the La Liga title. Uh, back on the back of this defence, he showed his, his versatility because in previous years when we had Ronaldo, it was poor defence and, you know, we, we looked like we could leak goals at any moment in time. He completely showed his tactical versatility, one in which we could just lock it up and win the league by winning 1-0 every single week. Off of a Ramos header or a Ramos penalty or a Benzema, a Benzema goal, we could win like that every single week. And it would be not, not an issue, not a fluke, not, what, not anything like that at all. And um, I think all the credit has to go to Zinedine Zidane. I think the following season should have been similar, but it was played by injury completely. I just think it was a terrific year by by Sidhu. Um Anyone else who I think deserves a praise, um, I think Casemiro had a fantastic year as well, one in which he was defensively sure as ever, and he was scoring goals on a. Uh, he was he's prolific as well. That is kind of crazy, but he was actually pretty pretty damn good in front of goal. Um, every time there was an opportunity to get forward, you would always see Casemiro in the box. Valon Mendy was, I thought, was top. I thought he was fantastic that year. Um, Nacho won us some actual points that, that year as well. Um, and you look to crowd guys like Modric and Kroos, maybe they do have a second life. Maybe things aren't over for them because the narrative on Tony Kroos especially was that he was done after 18-19. And... I think that season just proved that he had a little bit left in him and a little bit he, he did have. So, you know, everything that, we, you know, we have now, that Champions League run in 2022, uh, the Champions League run in 2024, 
it was all built upon this this Zizou team, the one that you know complete completely got gave us foundations, and um, probably was the last what great team that we had with that core um, of Ramos, Modric, Kroos, uh, Benzema. We still had Bale at this time, and you know this was in the midst of all the Bale stuff, um, Wales Golf Madrid, with him sleeping on the bench, stuff like that. Um, but you know it was a fantastic year. I'm going to rate this team now. This is something I'm going to do for every single uh, one of these seasons. I'm going to rate this out of 10 uh, in terms of success, in terms of future success, and in terms of, you know, underappreciation. Um, and I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a solid 7 out of 10 because I don't think, I think we've got some very, very good ones to come. Ones in which I definitely forgotten a little bit more because this one's a bit fresher in our memory. Um, but yeah. Let me know what you guys think of this um, this season in the comments below. Um, we'll be back uh, on Friday because um, we can't do it tomorrow, but we'll be back on Friday for an AC Milan review, um, first preseason game. Um, this series will be returning in every little old place. You know, you can expect it whenever, uh, wherever. Um, it'll be random times <laughs> whenever I feel like it, to be totally honest. Um, whenever we don't have anything else to talk about, most likely. Um, and so we'll be talking about this uh, instead. But we do have the next one lined up, next uh, next season lined up. It's just a matter of getting that recorded. So, you know, um, but do be excited about that. But that is it for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.